On this week's episode of Inside Iowa, check out how music is playing a part in the healing process at the University of Iowa hospitals and clinics. Meet an Iowa student making a difference through Big Brothers Big Sisters. Get a new recipe from a fan with Kinnick's Kitchen. Go behind the scenes as the UI dancers prepare for a performance. And see how the Children's Hospital is making smiles happen. Inside Iowa starts now. Welcome back to another exciting episode of Inside Iowa, your chance to see how University of Iowa students, staff, and alumni are making a difference in the community. I'm Eric Dawn. And I'm Lauren Moss. We bring you stories from around campus every week to give you a sneak peek into what Hawkeyes are up to. The University of Iowa hospitals and clinics help sick patients all of the time, and one special prescription they have found is music therapy. Research has shown that music can reduce anxiety and improve rehabilitation among patients. That's right, Eric. Every music therapist finds a unique program with each patient, just like physical therapists do with injuries, only with instruments and songs. If students at the University of Iowa want to become a music therapist, they must receive a certificate from the American Music Therapy Association in addition to their undergraduate program. There's even a music therapy club on campus that hosts fundraising performances for Iowa City Hospice. Let's see how one music therapist already makes a difference at the UI Children's Hospital. When you look at the definition of music therapy, um, we look at music therapy being the therapeutic use of musical interventions to uh, help uh, the the growth or the maintenance of skills in an individual within a therapeutic relationship with a board certified music therapist. We're using the music for specific goals and objectives within a therapeutic relationship. And we do a lot of singing. Uh, with child singing, if they're able, it definitely builds their respiratory strength when they're singing and deep breathing. Um, I love playing instruments with them, teaching them to play instruments, guitars, we bring in rhythm instruments and drums. What I think really is the most um, powerful for me as a therapist is when I go to see a patient and they're really down and they're really non-responsive. Um, and the music starts and there's just that spark and there's that moment where you have that connection um, because of the relationship but also because of the medium that we're using of music. When I sing it, it makes me a little bit stronger. It does make you a little bit stronger. Every time you go through something tough, mm -hmm. does it make you stronger? Yeah. Yeah. You one tough girl then, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For about five years now, I've been specifically working with the teens who have spinal fusion surgery here at the hospital. And I'm just going to have you begin by taking some deep breaths. I feel like you're sniffing something that smells really good. It was uh, begun through nursing saying we really need some additional help for some of our kids who are experiencing post-operative discomfort. How is your pain right now? Still about the same? I go and see them on the second day after their surgery and support them when they're up in the chair, providing relaxation training, music-assisted relaxation, and a presence with them while they're sitting up. We know that coping is an active endeavor, it's not something passive, so we're giving children ways to have mastery, things that they can have control over and to develop their autonomy so they're not helpless and they're not just fearfully waiting for the next thing that's going to happen to them, but they're actually taking control of their environment and you've seen some children like that who they come here and they own it uh, and we love that. Uh, we want them to be actively engaged.
nice work on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I have it on my iPod. Do you really? And I sing it to myself. You sing it to yourself? Yeah. Personally, Lauren, I love listening to music on my way to class, and it's amazing to see how big of an influence it can have on someone's life. You're absolutely right, Eric, but that's not the only way the University of Iowa can change people's lives for the better. If you don't have any of those special skills, Anyone in the Iowa community, including students and faculty, can join Big Brothers Big Sisters. This is a national mentorship program that people can join right here in Johnson County and all over the state. I've heard about the Sports Buddies program where kids interested in sports are matched up with a mentor and get tickets to Hawkeye games. How cool is that? That's really cool and a fun opportunity, but it's bigger than just going to sports game. This one-on-one -on -one relationship can really build the potential for a child. Let's meet one Iowa student who volunteers her time as a big sister. Big Brothers Big Sisters of Johnson County is an organization that helps children in the community by providing one-on-one -on -one relationships with a mentor. University of Iowa students have helped to make that happen. In the last 12 months, 338 of the 484 mentors who volunteered with Big Brothers Big Sisters were University of Iowa students. And we have the community-based program where you match, we match uh, kids with volunteers and they meet outside of school, um, you know, on the weekends, after school, things like that. And then we also have a program called School Based, which is the program that I work for during the school year. Kaylee Miner is going to be a sophomore social work student at the University of Iowa this fall. Kaylee is a community-based mentor and was matched as a big sister to Jade at the beginning of June and enjoys being a support system. I think um, like being able to be another person in their life that they can come to if they would ever need anything or just have some fun with when they need a break from the everyday routine. Yeah, the, the events are really great because it's sometimes things that kids wouldn't and volunteers wouldn't be able to do normally without having them planned for them. So this is only our second event. Um, so first we went to a cookout out at Kent Park. We um, made a fire. Uh, and we um, roasted uh, s'mores. Today um, there was a picnic beforehand and then there was a magician who came and did a bunch of card tricks which the kids really enjoyed and then there's some more fun act outside activities. It's the little things mentors can do that make a big impact on the future education of their little. 67% of former littles say that their big played a role in their decision to attend college. It's just a great way to give back to the community and it's a great way to spend your time um, helping someone that needs a little, an extra friend. Volunteering your time to help someone else is such a wonderful thing. We're going to take a quick break, but coming up, you'll meet an Iowa tailgater who loves to try new dishes. And you'll be surprised by what he can cook on the grill. Inside Iowa will return. Hi, this is Coach Bluter, and I'm here to tell you it's game on. The Hawkeyes are ready for the season, and we hope you're ready to join us. Order your Iowa women's basketball season tickets today. Call 1-800-IA-HAWKS or visit HawkeyeSports.com. Guys are rising. After a trip to the NIT championship game last season, the Iowa men's basketball team will be heating things up on the court once again, and you can help get Carver rocking. Order your season tickets today. Don't miss a minute of the action. Call 1 800 IA Hawks or visit HawkeyeSports.com. For more than 100 years, the University of Iowa community has been waking up to the Daily Iowan. Today, it's the largest newsroom in eastern Iowa, and now you can see the news every night on Daily Iowan TV. DITV, your news, sports, and weather source for the University of Iowa and is produced by University of Iowa students and presented by the Hawkeye Network. 
And we're back bringing you the latest from the University of Iowa. Every week we meet great fans and we get to check out some great food in our segment, Kinnick's Kitchen. This week we meet Neil who has three generations of Hawkeyes in his family. And he loves trying new recipes at every tailgate. This weekend he's whipping up some crab legs. It's a delicious alternative to the traditional burger or brat. It's tasty and it's surprisingly easy to do. All you have to do is just wrap them in foil and toss them on the grill or griddle. But don't get caught without some savory butter to dip them in. Crab legs on a grill? Let's check it out. We're here with Neil, and when I was walking around, I saw crab on a griddle. I knew I had to stop. So first off, Neil here, three generations of Iowa graduates, which is awesome. Uh, secondly, crab on a griddle, I knew I had to talk more to him. How are you doing, Neil? I'm doing fine. Tell me a little bit about oh, what you got going on. Well, we try to do something special every every game. Mm -hmm. This game just happened to be our, our crab leg game, so, so you, you hit us at the right time. Now, is it possible to cook crab legs at a tailgate? Well, yeah, all you need to do is get some tin foil and you steam them. Yep. And, and they come out just awesome. You put, get a little butter in the pan and you get little cups to put the butter in and, and it's awesome. So I'll say, when I when I think about tailgating, crabs never really crossed my mind. And so I had to do a double take when I saw this. Crab at a tailgate? Come on, you knew I had to stop. So what's the secret? How long does it take? How do you prepare it? How do you cook it out here? It's Hawkeye tailgating. What, what could you not? <laughs> Why are you surprised? All it takes is to go down to the local fish market and you get yep. some crab legs, jumbo crab, and you put them on the grill and you would cook them for about 10 minutes. And we put them in tin foil to steam them and you flip them over about the last two or three minutes. So it doesn't take a lot of time. Oh no, just 10 minutes and they're good, they're golden, they're good to go. Is it messy? Well, it is a little messy and the, and the tines hurt when you're, when you're cracking the shells open. So you gotta be careful about the tines because they are, they are sharp. Is it worth it? Oh my God. Nothing better than crab legs. You gotta try some. You mind if I grab some? You do so. All right, I'm gonna come over here and go grab one of these pieces here. I gotta tell you, look at how beautiful that looks. Dump it in the butter. Oh, you know I'm gonna have to dump this in some butter here. <laughs> so he's even got little cups for butter, which I gotta say is, is a brilliant idea to do it. We're gonna do a little dip. I'm gonna have some crab legs tailgate. Oh, this is awesome. Is that the way the Hawkeyes do it or what? <laughs> I gotta tell you. When you're trying to figure out what to do for your next tailgate, there is no reason you should not be considering crab. I think you'll be happy you did. Now that is some first class tailgating. Hawkeyes sure know how to cook. From the stadium to the stage, the university is always going above and beyond. Find out how after the break. Tradition. Mm -hmm. Ambition. Exploration. Inspiration. You feel it when you step on campus at the University of Iowa. The energy and pride of students inspired by our history. And excited about our future. When you join the Hawkeye family, you're a part of it all. Be a part of it. Be a part of it. Be a part of it. Be a Hawkeye. Second down at two, Bordell. and the Hawks do it. Hartley sprinting back. Into the, it's caught, it's in, Let's the go. five! Yes, a touchdown. touchdown! I can't believe it! A touchdown to Marv Cook! Holy cow! Can't believe it! Six seconds to go! 
Hartley to Cook, and the Hawks have the lead. Welcome back to Inside Iowa. Now, a degree in dance can really set a student apart when trying to break into a performing arts career. The top-rated dance program here at Iowa really focuses on challenging dancers to expand their technique and knowledge of theory behind the art of dancing. And it takes a lot of work. That's right. I don't know if I can do it, but let's watch the dancers get ready to put on a performance here at the university. I get extremely nervous when my work is presented um, because it's personal. It's, 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 it's like a baby. It's your child that you're putting out into the world and you just hope that everything, uh, it will be received well and um, everything will be fine with it. I'm a graduate student in the University of Iowa's dance department and um, we're preparing for our thesis concert. Lifescapes is composed of three graduating graduate students from the dance department. We audition dancers in August. We started rehearsal mostly in January and we're presenting uh, the first week of April. My piece is composed of a series of vignettes. It speaks to uh, identity from an African-American male's perspective, um, and it deals with issues of race, uh, issues of sexuality, as well as uh, other topical issues. So in thinking about it, I wanted to make sure that I, I handle the content from a personal point of view. I actually started coming up with movement and steps for the dancers in January. But the background of the information that forms the work is a life's process. I'm always excited to see a thesis concert because of the investigation and the discovery that the choreographer makes. So I hope that um, the audience viewing will also discover something new for themselves. Lauren, I can bust a move like that. You want to see? <laughs> no, we'll just take your word for it, Eric. But on that note, let's take a break. When we come back, we'll find out how the university is using a unique, cutting-edge procedure to create smiles. Kick back and relax as Java Blend takes you from your home right into the Java House in downtown Iowa City. Experience local and national talent perform for a live audience featuring musical groups from all over the country. Java Blend puts you in the front row of each performance. Java Blend is presented by Iowa Public Radio and the Hawkeye Network. Hawkeye fans, don't miss the action on Mediacom Court at Carver Hawkeye Arena this fall with an exciting season of Iowa Hawkeye Volleyball. For only $30, you get two season tickets, two Iowa Volleyball t-shirts, weekly emails, and much more. 
seniors Nikki Daly, Rachel Bedell, and Bethany Yeager want to see you at Carver Hawkeye Arena this season. To order, call 1-800-IA-HAWKS or visit HawkeyeSports.com. We'll see you at Carver Hawkeye Arena this fall. Go Hawks! Welcome back to Inside Iowa. Lauren still won't let me dance, so instead we're going to introduce you to a UI patient going through some serious changes. That's right. What's the first thing you notice when you meet a person? Their smile, right? Facial paralysis can alter the muscles needed to show off those pearly whites, and it's caused by damage to the brain or facial nerves. Facial reanimation surgery uses muscle transfers or nerve grafting to recreate the damaged muscles. It's a long process, but the university provides this treatment, which is changing one young lady's life. Nellie was diagnosed with a brain tumor on the top of her brain stem. So she's had three very difficult brain surgeries. So she's had a very challenging young life. It also left her left side compromised mostly with the facial paralysis on her left side. This surgery that we're having at this time is much, much better than brain surgery. For her, this is a, a huge undertaking because she always says, um, you know, I want people to know how I feel on the outside because I'm happy on the inside. I think that with this smile surgery, it will just make me more confident in school and in different public places and just when people will see me, I can smile the biggest smile that I can and I can be more friendly and they'll see um, the spirit and the smile that I have on the outside. So our favorite thing is the fact that this is a this is a happy surgery if there is such a thing. Bigger than any Christmas list for her is just to be able to have a smile so we're very grateful for the opportunity to be here and have that possibility. Smile reanimation surgery as a whole is a very unique uh, thing across the country. Um, Facial paralysis in general is a, is a at best, undertreated uh, problem for patients. There's just a, not a lot of people out there that do much of anything for patients with facial paralysis. So at best, it's undertreated. Um, at worst, it, people will go untreated completely. This center here at the University of Iowa, which I began when I got here almost two years ago, is one of only a few comprehensive facial nerve centers in the country that specialize, that uh, focus in and devote a significant amount of our uh, resources, my time and my, and my practice to the treatment of patients with facial paralysis. So yeah, it's very unique uh, to Iowa, absolutely. It's very unique to the Midwest and really the West in general. The way that Natalie is undergoing this surgery is a two-stage procedure. So a year ago, we harvested or brought out from her right leg the sural nerve, which is a sensory nerve, and we used that nerve graft to sew to a branch of her working facial nerve that gives some smile on her right side, and we sewed into that branch, and then we tunneled underneath her lip and buried the tip of that nerve graft under the left side of her lip over here. And then it's been a matter of waiting for that nerve to regenerate and be ready to accept another nerve graft, which is gonna be the second stage of the surgery. So in that surgery, we take a part of her gracilis muscle, which is from her inner thigh, and we put it up into the face, and we hook it up around the muscles of her lip, and we sew the artery and vein in so that it can get blood flow in and blood flow out to keep the muscle alive and we suture that nerve that goes to the muscle to the nerve graft that we put in last year. That gives this muscle, once it gets regenerated and the nerve starts working, an opportunity for this muscle to be powered by this native facial nerve. It gives her the opportunity to have an involuntary, natural, what we call mimetic smile, which is an automatic one that she doesn't have to think about. And so it'll take at least, it'll take around six months for Natalie to start to see movement in that muscle. That's a function of the nerve regeneration from the ner end of the nerve graft that we sewed to all the way into the muscle. It just takes time for those nerves to regenerate. So about six months for her to probably start beginning to see the motion. And then over the 
course of the next six to 12 months after that, we may continue to see improved movement and more and more movement. Wow, seeing Natalie the first time coming out of surgery was just unbelievable. It was just so much fun to, you could noticeably see that there was a difference, obviously, in her, in her smile. She was definitely thrilled beyond her wildest dreams, I think, even. Natalie's surgery yesterday went really well. I was very pleased with every aspect of it. We were able to do exactly as we had planned to do using her gracilis muscle, uh, transferring that up to the paralyzed side of her face. We easily found the tip of the nerve graft that we had put in there before. We were able to put her smallish size vessels together and the blood flow in and out of the muscle was very, very nice. And then we were able to sew the nerves together and everything really from start to finish went really nicely. Dr. Henson is awesome. He's so nice and I said that he's more of an artist and not a doctor because he wants to, you know, make me the best that I can be and I really like that about him. I think that with the smile I'll be able to show my happiness that's inside. It's truly inspiring. She had such a great attitude about that whole process. Absolutely. That's all we have for this week's episode of Inside Iowa. Join us next time to see how Iowa students, staff, and alumni continue to make a big difference in our community. For Inside Iowa, I'm Lauren Moss. And I'm Eric Dawn. See, see you, you next week. week. And now we leave you with some of the highlights of the Iowa football season so far.